Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching vSphere Data Protection Backup and Recovery. In another lesson, I provided you an introduction to vSphere Data Protection and I showed you how to install the vSphere Data Protection Virtual Appliance. So in this lesson, I'll walk you through the process of backing up your vSphere Virtual Machines with VDP and then recovering virtual machines and virtual machine files. So with that, let's get started. The process of backing up virtual machines with vSphere data protection is pretty straightforward. VMware has made it easy with a nice getting started wizard that will walk you through the process of creating your first backup job. You'll also have a backup tab where you can create backup jobs, edit, delete, enable or disable backup jobs or even run ad hoc which means non-scheduled backup jobs. In just a second, I'll be walking you through everything you need to know about backing up your virtual machines with VDP. But first, something else I'd like to mention is the reporting. VDP has some very nice reports that tell you the status of your backup jobs, information about why backup jobs may have failed, the amount of capacity that has been used in your backup repository on the VDP virtual appliance, and just about anything else you might need to know about the status of your VDP backups and recoveries. So with that, let's go over to our vSphere web client and we'll get started creating some backups of your vSphere virtual machines using vSphere data protection. Once you've installed and configured the vSphere Data Protection Virtual Appliance and then perform the final reboot of the virtual appliance, you'll need to log out and log back in to your vSphere web client, assuming you're already logged in. Once you log back in that second time, you'll see that the vSphere Data Protection menu option is now available on the home screen. So if I click on that, here I get a welcome to vSphere Data Protection. And this is where you connect your vCenter server to your VDP virtual appliance. So assuming you just have one, in my case I do, it's listed here and I'll click connect. Once we're connected to the VDP virtual appliance, here we get some additional information. So we've got basic tasks about creating a backup job, restoring a virtual machine, or seeing an overview of VDP. There's that backup tab that I mentioned. There's the restore tab, the reporting tab that I talked about, and the configuration. Up here, if you had multiple appliances, you could very quickly switch from one to the other. And then we've got an All Actions tab down here, which at this point just includes Disconnect. So let's go ahead and get started using that backup wizard by selecting here to create a backup job. The first thing we're asked about when creating a new backup job is which virtual machines would we like to back up. And one of the great things I think about vSphere Data Protection is it's super easy to back up all of the virtual machines in your virtual infrastructure in just a few clicks. So if we expand this out, let's just say that I want to back up all the virtual machines in all my virtual data centers. All I have to do is go through here and just check those three different virtual data centers. So if I create a new virtual data center, I'd have to come and modify the the backup job, but most companies aren't creating many new virtual data centers. And if you did, most likely you're going to have a lot more virtual machines in there. You'd probably deploy a new vSphere data protection virtual appliance, and then you'd have to create a new backup job anyway. But in our case, we have a small environment here at the Wirebrain Coffee Company, and we'll just be simply backing up all virtual machines in the virtual infrastructure with just a few checks. If I expand this out, you can see here I can also select individual clusters I want to back up, or even individual virtual machines that I want to back up. But to keep it simple, we'll just say we'll back up all virtual machines in the virtual infrastructure. Now, I'll be honest, I don't expect this to work 100% the first time. I haven't tested whether or not all these virtual machines are in a state where they're ready to be backed up. So I'm just going to play it by ear here, just to give it a shot, and we're going to try to back up everything. Certainly we'll get some failures, but that's also very realistic. Uh, certainly the first time you try to back up every virtual machine in your virtual infrastructure with VDP, I'll tell you, you might get some failures, but that's very realistic in any infrastructure that's been around for a while and has a number of virtual machines and you just try to back up every one of them the first time. Most likely you're going to get some sort of issue you have to deal with, and that's just part of really any backup application. So I'll click next here. And when do I want this backup to be performed? What's my schedule going to be? 
The default is going to be daily, but I could also perform it on a certain day of each week or on a certain day of the month. So the first Sunday, the second, third, fourth, last Sunday, or whatever day of the month I want to perform it. In my case, I'll say daily. I'll click next here. And then how long do I want to keep the backup data that I'm backing up? So I could choose to keep it forever, but the default is 60 days because most likely after 60 days, this backup data, it really isn't going to be very valuable and it could be taking up a lot of space. You could also keep it until a certain date or I could use a certain schedule. So here's an example or a default schedule they offer. Now in my case, let's just keep it for 60 days, which is the default and I'll say next. Let's give this backup job a name. I'll say all VM backup daily. Click next here and we get a ready to complete screen where we can review what we're about to do. We're creating a new backup job called all VM backup daily. It's going to back up all of my virtual data centers on a daily basis and retain that data for 60 days. Click finish here to complete. And now it tells us that the backup job was created successfully, but the system failed to add one or more clients to the backup job. Please check the events manager for specific details. And this is a warning from VDP. Now I have some idea in my head as to what these clients are that it had trouble adding to the backup job. For example, uh, the one in particular I'm thinking of is the VDP virtual appliance. It's running in that virtual data center that I said to back up all of the virtual machines that are contained inside. So I can see why the VDP virtual appliance would have trouble backing up itself. Another one that it could have trouble backing up, for example, is the vCenter Operations virtual appliances, or the vApp actually, two virtual machines inside. I know those are running in there. I haven't tried to back those up before. So VDP may have had trouble adding some of these VMware specific virtual appliances to the backup job, but we can go to the events manager and find out. I'll say okay here. And if we go up to reports, this is where we get information about the virtual machines running in our infrastructure and whether or not they're being protected by a particular backup job, the last time they were backed up, their status, and so forth. If we scroll down, notice that all these virtual machines are being protected by this backup job that we created. But look at this VDP virtual appliance. Of course, it's not being protected by a backup job. That's because, as I mentioned, it can't back up itself. So it looks like all of our virtual machines are being protected by this backup job, or they will be, of course, once this backup job actually starts and successfully backs them up. So let's go to the backup tab. And here's the backup job that we created. We can see that it's enabled. It's never run before, and it will run next at, we'll have to expand out this column here, 8 o'clock p.m. tonight. Well, I really don't want to wait until 8 o'clock p.m. for this to kick in. So what I'm going to do is select the job and then just click Backup Now. So we can back up all sources instead of all out-of-date sources because at this point, really, they're all out-of-date. So I would say back up all sources. And it says the backup request has been issued successfully. Then we can go into Reports. And pretty quickly, things should start happening in here. Of course, we can also check the status on the Events Console, where we can see that our backup job has started right here. We can also check the Tasks, the Task Console, and see that our VDP backup job is in progress here. It's creating a bunch of virtual machine snapshots and the status or the percentage complete is 10%. So since I'm backing up so many virtual machines, obviously this is going to take some time. What I'm going to do is just pause the recording here and I'll be right back as soon as the backup job has completed. With vSphere Data Protection installed and all of our virtual machine backups completed, now I'd like to walk you through the process of recovering a vSphere virtual machine using vSphere Data Protection. The process of recovering a vSphere virtual machine is simple. You go into vSphere Data Protection, go to the Restore tab, find the virtual machine that you'd like to restore, then select the backup instance of that virtual machine that you'd like to recover. 
you could overwrite an existing virtual machine or restore that virtual machine with a new name or inside a new ESXi host or data store location. Let's go over to our vSphere 5.1 lab and I'll walk you through the process. Okay, we're back and a few days have passed since I last configured vSphere data protection backups to back up all of our virtual machines. Now let's go check the status of those backups, see how things have been going, and then we'll attempt a recovery of one of the hopefully very successful virtual machine backups. To do that, I'll go here into the vSphere data protection application, connect to my VDP appliance. We'll go into the reports tab. And here we can see that our appliance status is normal. We've used 2.15% of our backup repository. Integrity checks have been running normally. We have 14 recently successful backups and three recently failed backups. If we look at the list of virtual machines here, we can see their status. In fact, we can sort by that column if we click on it to bring all of the, in this case, all of the failures to the top. Now, one of the virtual machines, a Windows 8 virtual machine, it had a failure in the last backup attempt, but if we go over here to the Restore tab and down to that virtual machine, we can see we do have some successful backups here. So for some reason the latest backup was a failure, but we do have some other successful backups if we look over in the reports. The other two virtual machines here are actually the vCenter Operations Manager User Interface and Analytics Virtual Machines from VMware, which really don't need to be backed up at all anyway. So I'm not going to turn this into a troubleshooting lesson. Sometimes, as you know, you do have virtual machine backup failures, and those are things that you need to go investigate. It could be that something occurred during the time that the virtual machine backup was happening. Maybe there was a network event that disconnected the VDP virtual appliance from the storage. You just never know, and that's something you would have to go and check out. But for the most part here, as you can see, 14 of our 17 virtual machines all had very successful backups over the last few days. And of course, the vSphere data protection virtual machine itself was not backed up. Now, all these virtual machines were backed up simply by me clicking on the virtual data center and saying, I want to back up every virtual machine inside of here. So even if I remove virtual machines or I add new virtual machines, no matter what virtual machines are inside that virtual data center, all virtual machines will be backed up by the vSphere Data Protection virtual appliance. If we want more detailed information, we can go over here into the events console and look at the history of backup tasks and see perhaps what caused one of the backup failures. If we still had backups running, we could go to the task console and check the status of those backup tasks. As you saw over here in the restore tab, I've got all the different virtual machines in my virtual data center that are being protected by VDP at this point, and I can expand out any one of these, and I can perform recoveries of these virtual machines across the various backup points. For example, let's say that I wanted to restore this Windows 8 virtual machine back to the last or latest backup that happened. I can select right there, go up here to restore, This screen really is just a confirmation that we do indeed want to restore that virtual machine and that backup point. I'll click Next here. By default, we'll be restoring it to the original location. If I wanted to, I could uncheck that. I could give it a new name, and I could restore it to a new location in the virtual data center, or even relocate it onto another data store in the virtual infrastructure. In our case, let's simply restore it over onto the existing location. Let's just say that a user was using that virtual machine yesterday. They had a file on their desktop. Last night, we performed the backup. This morning, they accidentally deleted that file and then, let's say, even deleted it from their trash. And you'd simply like to get it back to the point it was before. It could also be the case of an application upgrade, a reconfiguration that we can't seem to get back working again on, let's say, a web server or perhaps even a virus infestation on a virtual desktop. No matter what the reason, we're simply going to restore this virtual machine from its latest backup by clicking Next here. 
we're ready to complete it says no new virtual machines will be created but one virtual machine will be replaced on top of the existing virtual machine it says the restore parameters enter will result in the following virtual machine being overwritten if this is not acceptable please cancel if it is what you want to do then click finish right here and it says our restore was successfully initiated I'll say OK here. I know that this will take a few minutes because uh, I believe that virtual machine was uh, several gigabytes. Uh, I'll pause the recording and be right back. After a few minutes, the recovery of this Windows 8 virtual machine is completed. However, it didn't take hardly as long as you might expect. Let me show you why. If we go into the task view here in the vSphere web client, take a look at what actually happened. Since we were just restoring that virtual machine back to a previous backup point and it already existed, all it had to do was to create virtual machine snapshots, reconfigure, revert, and remove snapshots, and effectively put the virtual machine back to the point that it was last at when the backup occurred, all thanks to snapshot technology. This is much different than if the virtual machine were completely removed and had to be recovered from the backup repository and put back into the data store where it was run off of the vSphere host. Now that will certainly take longer, but let's walk through that process. We'll go into our vCenter server, into our virtual machines and templates, Let's go down to this web server number three. I'm going to simply right click on it. Go into all vCenter actions. Go down and delete it from disk. And uh oh, that virtual machine is gone. Let's say that a junior admin accidentally deleted it and we need to get that web server back as soon as possible. I'm going to go up to the home screen here into vSphere data protection. Let's go into Restore, go down and find the web server, and I'd like to recover it from the latest backup point. I'll click Restore. Again, that is the virtual machine and the backup point we want to recover. I'll click Next. It cannot go back exactly to its original location because that location no longer exists, but I'm just going to give it the same name that it had before. I'm going to try to put it back into the same location. Honestly, I don't recall which host it was on, so I'll just put it inside the cluster. We'll put it on the default data store. Click Next. It says one new virtual machine will be created. I'll click Finish here. It tells us the restore was successfully initiated. Let's say OK here. And let's go over to our vCenter server, into our virtual machines and templates. And let's give it just a second to see if our web server actually is restored from backup. And here we go. Here's the web server that we just restored from backup. With vSphere 5.1 data protection, it's really that easy to recover or restore virtual machines from backup, even if you've completely deleted those virtual machines from disk. So that's how to backup and restore virtual machines using vSphere data protection. With that, let's go back to our slides. That brings us to the end of this lesson covering vSphere 5.1 data protection, backup, and recovery. Thanks for watching.